Hello there, my fellow Psychic Bioforums, and welcome back to another episode of Warhammer 40k lore focused on the forces of the Tyranids. Since last week we pulled the big guns, so to speak, and detailed three of the so-called Bio-Titans, I thought that today it would be a nice idea to pull the scales back a little and talk about something a bit more specialized. And by specialized, I mean we're gonna talk about the Tyranid Army's very own version of a battle psyker. You undoubtedly heard about the Space Marine Librarians, for example. Well, this particular creature fulfills a rather similar role, at least on the battlefield. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Tyranid Zoanthrope. We're gonna talk about what these are, their many and varied abilities, and more. I'm your host, the hive mind narrator for today, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Zoanthropes are among the strangest and most bizarre of the Tyranids' myriad breeds encountered by the Imperium. They are powerful psychas, apparently engineered from harvested Eldar DNA to form living conduits for the focused power of the Tyranid hive mind. So extreme is their development that their atrophied bodies and bulbous heads are entirely energized by psychic force. They can shoot an extremely powerful warp blast and rival even an Eldar warlock in their psychic prowess. They can move only by psychically levitating themselves, drifting across the battlefield to rain bolts of incandescent psychic power on the enemy, or relay the synapse commands of the hive mind to its lesser braids. The Zoanthropes are without a doubt one of the most effective psychic creatures among the Tyranids. Their main means of defense is a warp blast psychic power that can kill even the mighty space marines. They are also a potent addition to a swarm of lesser Tyranid breeds as they have extended synaptic control and provide hard-hitting psychic attacks at range. Despite their power though, Zoanthropes sometimes seem to be the victims of their own massive energy reserves, and there have been many after-action reports putting Zoanthropes psychically burning themselves out in battle. After hurling many psychic bolts or sustaining their shield for an extended period, their craniums have been observed to burst and bleed out, sending them crashing limply to the ground. Imperial psychers who have witnessed this liken it to the perils of the warp. This is something that normal psychers can suffer from when their minds overload with psychic energy. This, funnily enough, seems quite similar to the practices of the orc psychers, who are famous for literally blowing each other up when channeling too much. In addition to their ability to hurl mighty bolts of warp energy at the enemy, zoanthropes are also very difficult to destroy, especially considering how weak and feeble their actual bodies are. This resilience stems from their ability to create a powerful bubble of warp energy around themselves, shielding them from all kinds of weapons and even turning aside physical blows in close combat, much like some kind of a naturally generated void shield. Like their ability to drift above the ground by extending a bubble of warp energy around themselves, the psychic shield seems to be constantly regenerated by the zoanthrope, and is always present as long as the creature is alive. The zoanthrope, like I said earlier, is among the Tyranids' most powerful creatures when the psychic powers are concerned. However, strangely enough, these manifest not from drawing power from the warp, but by tapping into the vast gestalt will of the Tyranid hive mind itself. But for whatever reason, some of their abilities still have the name Warp in them. Whether this is because the effects are similar to Warp abilities, or it's a good old-fashioned canon conflict, your guess is as good as mine. Next, we're gonna list the powers that have been displayed by the Zoanthrope in Imperial Records. Catalyst the Zoanthrope can send out a signal from the hive mind infusing lesser Tyranid creatures with unnatural vitality. Death Shock When a Zoanthrope is slain, its death sends a psychic shockwave through the hive mind. All the Tyranid creatures within synapse range will automatically break or flee as quickly as they can. Unfortunately, this kind of shockwave is also known to affect the mind of any non-Tyranid psyker in the area. 
dominion. The creature reaches into the depth of the hive mind and strengthens its link to the indomitable alien will, projecting a blanket of control and purpose through its synapse to all the tyrannid bioforms in the area. Hypnotic Gaze The creature can use its powerful gaze to snare the mind of a nearby warrior, holding it immobile and helpless as long as the stare remains unbroken. The zoanthrope can affect only a single enemy using this power, provided it can make eye contact with the target. Onslaught The zoanthrope infuses a nearby tyrannid brood with burning energy and the pitiless drive of the hive mind to devour all in their path. Paroxysm Summoning the power of the hive mind, the creature assails its enemies with crippling pain, tearing at their nerve endings and filling their minds with agony and making it difficult for them to fight or even to stand. Psychic Scream The creature lets forth a terrible silent scream echoing in the mind as a crippling shriek. All those sentient living creatures within a 20 meter radius suffer a crippling blow. The Horror The zoanthrope unleashes a wave of horror knowing at the resolve of the enemy. This ability, however, does not affect soulless machines like the Necrons or beings of pure psychic power like the demons. Warp Blast By sending out a burning bolt of warp energy, the zoanthrope blasts an area with raw power. It must choose a single creature as a target, though others nearby will be affected as well. Warp Lance This one is more focused and a bit more potent than a Warp Blast, and is mainly used against heavily armed targets and vehicles. As far as the scientific stats go, we have the scientific name is Tyrannicus Animus Aborans. Its nickname is The Brain. Its average height is 3.5 meters or 11.4 feet. Its average weight is 0.5 tons. It was first encountered on Moloch, not to be confused with Molech. Its designated role is that of psychic assault and it is evaluated as a high threat. Outside of regular zoanthropes, we also have these creatures called neurophropes, which are supposedly evolved versions of the standard zoanthrope. These alpha monsters have the ability to leech the very life force from the enemy and power their own attacks. There are some who believe that the neurophrope strain is the progeny of the Doom of Malantai, which is a truly horrifying concept for all sentient races. If you don't know what the Doom of Malantai is, I got you covered in a minute. The neurophropes can also use their parasitic power to heal nearby zoanthropes, which helps to safeguard against the overload of psychic power that commonly overwhelms these creatures. A combined host of these psychic bioforms is a formidable threat indeed. Now, the so-called Doom of Malantai was an especially adapted zoanthrope with the ability to feed upon the psychic energy and the very souls of its victims. This thing played an instrumental role in the destruction of the majority of the Eldar population on the craft world of Malantai in the late 41st millennium. The Eldar legends of the Doom of Malantai refer not only to the tale of an entire craft world's death, but also of the abominable tyrannid creature that caused it. To the Eldar, these two are indistinguishable. The Lament speaks of a tyrannid monster unlike any encountered before, a beast that gorged upon not flesh and blood, but the very life force of the victims, leaving only soulless husks and oblivion in its wake. The Doom of Malantai was an adaptation of the zoanthrope bioform, and its weak physical appearance belied its actual horror. So it was that when a lone, wounded bioship invaded Craftworld Malantai, the Eldar were at first ignorant of the danger they were actually in. They had no idea that the true power lay not with the towering monsters rampaging through their home, but with the unassuming creature left relatively unharmed to feed on Eldar souls. As it fed, the doom of Malantai's power grew the absorbed life power enhancing its already fearsome psychic might. Once gorged on the spirits of the Craftworld's infinity circuit, it was almost invulnerable, 
possessing the power to pulp Eldar warriors, snap Wraithbone war constructs in half, and shatter towering spires with cataclysmic bolts of psychic energy. It was all the few Eldar survivors could do to simply escape Malantai with their lives. The craft world was found adrift in space many years later by a force of the Grey Knight Space Marines of the Imperium, reduced to nothing but a cold, lifeless shell. Of the loathsome creature that brought about the destruction, there was no sign. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you on the formidable Tyranid Psychers known as the Zoanthropes. Also, if any of you played the game Dawn of War 2, you're probably aware of just how annoying these creatures can be. Now, are the Zoanthropes, or this Doom of Malantai, among your favorite Tyranid creatures? What do you like or dislike most about them? Personally, although it's not their most destructive ability, I find their hypnotic gaze to be their most fearsome aspect. Feel free to write down and share any of your opinions on this matter in the comments below as usual. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects.